Hello, and welcome to a new series from Ancestry called Questions and Ancestors, Black Family History. In this series, we're gonna focus on today's culture and society makers within the Black community and help them unearth their family histories using Ancestry records and research. Black history is American history and our ancestors survived so much. They fought so hard for us to be exactly where we are. We can still honor their memories and we can honor their part in our lives and shaping who we are by looking at the information that they left behind in records. Today, our first guest joining us is Elaine Welterra. She is a co-host on CBS's The Talk. She is a best-selling author, an award-winning journalist, and she is the former editor-in-chief of Teen Vogue. Hello, Elaine. Hello, Nika. You come from a remarkable line of resilient people, and you often talk about how your parents raised you to go further than any other person in your family and lineage. Can you explain what that means to you? Yeah, I mean, like most descendants of slaves in this country, um, we recognize the unique opportunity and responsibility that comes with being a Black person in 2021, you know, freedoms that were not afforded to our ancestors. I really do think that knowing where you come from and who you come from informs how you move through the world and helps power you as you take these steps through uncharted territory. A lot of us think that our ancestors' names are not in documents, that, you know, that there's a, a huge hurdle with tracing people before the Civil War and that you can't get over it. And, and while it may be challenging at times, it is not impossible. So Elaine, we were able to identify eight of your fifth great-grandparents, and we have four of them documented in 1870. Okay, wow. Which is an incredible feat when it comes to African-American genealogy and family history research. Why? Because that is the first census that we have in the United States that documents both those who were formerly enslaved and those who were free after the Civil War. Now, for context for you, I only have the names of maybe three sets of my fifth grade grandparents. You have more than I do. I feel grateful. I feel like this is a rare opportunity to even have this blessing of, of knowing these, you know, these names of my ancestors. Yeah, well, we're going to take a road trip down to Georgia. Now, Reconstruction, which was the time period right after the Civil War, beginning after 1865 when slavery was abolished, was a really challenging and trying and tumultuous time in our country. We have one of your ancestors who was a registered voter in the state of Georgia. Wow. And his name was Jesse Wooten. And here he is on the 1870 census. This is five years after the war, a few years after he registered to vote. He's there with his family. If you note, he's 40 years of age. He works on the farm. He's a male over the age of 21 years old who is eligible to be a voter. This is something that was huge for our ancestors at the time because they, they did not have rights like this. It took a certain level of bravery to go down and to register to vote, especially in a community where you were known a few years earlier as being enslaved and not having the right to do this, right? And, and it's obvious that Jesse wanted a voice and he wanted his voice to be heard and he wanted to inspire change by doing so. This is something that, that is a hallmark of what you do and how you use your voice in today's days and times, right? You both are choosing to use your voice in a very particular and unique way to make sure that, that your causes and your desires and really your resiliency and who you are as a person is heard in multiple ways. So these are registered voters, right, in Telfair County, Georgia. And you'll see highlighted number 73 is Jesse Wooten, who is 38 years old. His race is marked as colored. This voters list is from 1867. There was a presidential election in 1868 where Ulysses S. Grant was elected the president. So him registering at this particular time was so important because that enabled him to vote in that next presidential election. Wow. How, how was he even allowed to register to vote if technically Black men were not eligible to vote at the time? 
every state had different policies. And so some states enfranchised Black men earlier than others. It's just that 15th Amendment was sort of the blanket across the country that said Black men have the right to vote. I'm just so honored to even have this opportunity through Ancestry to sit with you, Nika. And I'm so grateful that you've taken the time to dig into my family records, to shed a little bit of light on where my people come from and and to kind of unearth some untold stories from, from my, my family lineage. The fact that you're doing this work to stitch together those, those histories for us is, it's huge. It's really special. Elaine made some incredible discoveries today, and we invite you also to take part in the process. Learning your family history is indeed possible. To get started, visit Ancestry.com forward slash Black History.